Hi, I am Selva. In this one, we will try to understand the QQ plot and statistics very, very clearly. Now, this is how the QQ plot looks like. You would have definitely come across this. Now, this is a very common interview question, which is, what is a QQ plot and how do you interpret it? Now, most people will say, we use the QQ plot to test if a given distribution, given data is following a normal distribution, normal distribution or not. Now, that is not incorrect, but that is not completely correct also. I will tell you why. Second thing is, how do you know if this is following a normal distribution? People will say, okay, if all these data points are following, following, following along this straight line, if all these data points are following along the straight line, then it follows a normal distribution, otherwise it is not. That is also correct, but not giving the complete picture. So in this one, we will try to understand the process of making the QQ plot from scratch so that you know how, once you know how it is created, you naturally know how to completely interpret it. Let's get right into it. So let's start with the problem statement. So say you have a variable y and you want to know if this variable y follows a normal distribution or not. It's also normal distribution is also called as Gaussian, Gaussian distribution. So that's what we want to know. And you have this variable y which contains 500 data points. We have the values y1, y2, y3, so on till y500. So we have 500 data points. Now, the very first step that you want to do is we are going to draw an equally sized sample from a standard normal distribution. Now, it is not necessary or mandatory to keep it as a standard normal distribution. This is the norm. However, it can be any normal distribution. Now, so you have the data, which is the y variable, and the x is from the standard normal distribution. We have printed some sample values from both y and x. This is for sake of understanding. So you have these kind of values for y as well as x. This is where we start. Now the very first step is we sort both the x and the y and arrange them in the x and the y axis respectively. So as a result of this, so you have the x variable. After sorting it, you have x1 dash, x2 dash. Previously we had x1, x2, so on and so forth. Now you have x1 dash, x2 dash, so on and so forth. So after sorting it, all the numbers are in increasing order. Likewise, the same applies for the y variable also. All the numbers are in increasing order. Now, this data, we are arranging them in the x-axis and y-axis. So these are the different data points, the, all the dots in the bottom and the vertical lines, vertical line. We arrange them in the x and the y-axis. Now we come to step three. We have arranged the data already. Now, for both x and the y data, that is, the distribution, we call it as the theoretical quantiles. Now, I'll tell you why. And the y-axis, we call it as the data quantiles. Now, what happens here is, we are going to compute the first percentile to 100th, 100th percentile, 100th percentile for both the x as well as the y. The x contained, originally contained the distribution, the distribution that we want to compare, which is the standard normal distribution. And y contains the actual data, which is the variable that we have, right? Now, we are going to mark on this plot all the respective quantiles from first percentile, first quantiles, first percentile up to the hundredth percentile. So, for example, I have drawn certain, certain markers here. This point here corresponds to tenth percentile on the x-axis. Likewise, this point here marks the tenth percentile, corresponding tenth percentile, on the y-axis, which is the data. Likewise, we are, do, we are doing this for 25th percentile, 50th percentile, I have marked it here, but we do this for all the, all the percentiles, first to 100th percentiles. Now, ideally, if the data y follows a normal distribution, then the corresponding percentiles, for example, the 10th percentile of y and the 10th percentile of x will meet on the on or in this case on the reference line here it is not the case if it was following a normal distribution it should fall on the reference line but here in this case it is falling is falling right over here so essentially if both the distributions match then all the respective quantiles will fall exactly will fall exactly on the reference line it will not deviate away from the reference line that's what we observe whenever we are looking at a qq plot now i said QQ plot need not be restricted to normal distribution. The x-axis here, in this case, we have considered, to it, considered it to be a normal distribution. 
but that need not be the case it can be any distribution of your choice we are only testing if the data that we have matches the distribution that we want to compare with now the most commonly compared distribution in the real world is the normal distribution that's why people are accustomed to associate the qq plot to checking if a given data is following a normal distribution or not it need not be normal distribution all the time if you want to compare it to a poisson distribution you can try to test poisson theoretical quantiles so that's how we interpret qq plots if you have more questions please leave them in the comments and if you like the video please hit the like button and also subscribe and hit the bell button to get the notifications for all future videos thanks for watching